Welcome back. We finished the last little bit with these two examples. Hopefully you've taken some time to try them on your own. But to get the answer, we just plug it into the formula. So for $500 at a 5% interest rate discounting for one year, we get a present value of $476.19. Again, we can plug that into the future value formula to check if our answer is right. Similarly, for $1,500 at an 8% interest rate, just plug into the formula, we get $13.88.89, and we can plug that into the future value formula to check to see if our answer is right. As we are thinking about both present and future value, it might be helpful to just take a minute and revisit everyone's favorite formula, the rule of 70, which just to, to remind you all is just an approximation and it's a simple way to determine how long an investment will take to double. So we divide by 70, we divide 70 by the interest rate without a decimal point. For instance, if the rate is 6%, 70 over six, at a 6% interest rate, it'll take about 12 years to double your money. And this is going to be important next unit in terms of our personal finances, it was important last unit in terms of the macro economy. And it's going to be just a good thing to have in our toolbox. But now to change gears for a little bit, we've been thinking about supply and demand. And we've been thinking about it as these basic interactions between buyers and sellers. But it might be more useful as we close our discussion of how dollars flow through the economy to think about this concept of circular flow and think about multiple markets, not just the product market, goods and services, but the factor market, what goes into production. And when we think about this circular flow, what we're really doing is linking businesses to people. Businesses produce things, these things are sold in the product market for you all to consume, but you all also sell things. You sell labor and capital to the factor market, which businesses use to then produce things. This is known as circular flow. It's how money goes around the economy. But we can think about it a different way, which is money. Money is going around the economy in the opposite direction. You are getting things from the product market. You are consuming things, but you are giving money to the product market. The product market is giving money to that bit, those businesses. Similarly, when you sell your label, labor and capital to the factor market for businesses to produce with, you are getting money in exchange. Selling your labor is the labor market. Selling your capital is the financial market. And we're going to close this unit talking about very briefly, very cursorily, how financial markets. Markets exist to bring buyers and sellers together. So what do buyers and sellers trade in financial markets? Keeping in mind that in product markets, they trade goods and services, the stuff you buy. What are they trading in financial markets? Take a minute to think about it on your own. Well, they're trading financial assets. They're trading stocks, bonds, commodities, derivatives, various forms of currencies. If you remember our discussion of money earlier this week and before spring break. Now, the reason I have asterisks next to these stocks and bonds is because that's what we're going to talk about right now, because it's going to help us, like I said, leapfrog into unit four. So let's talk about stocks. What's a stock? Stock is a way to give people ownership of companies. Stocks are financing provided through the issuing of shares. And what that means is companies give you a small percentage of their company, what, what they are, Amazon, Google, whatever, in order to raise money. And with that money, they might launch new products, they might expand into new markets, they might build new buildings, or they might pay off debt. So you buy a small portion of a company, a share of that company, and in exchange, that company takes your money and does stuff with it. So let's, let's explain this with Google. When I wrote these slides, Google was currently trading 
at a share price of $1,162.30. And Google was worth $805 billion. So for that share price, for $1,162.30, I can own 700 millionths, that's a fraction, of the company, of the entity we know as Google. So just to recap, when I say shares, you should hear stock. Different than financing provided by bonds. Financing through bonds is the issuing of debt. So companies can issue debt, people can issue debt, but we often see governments issue debt, not just the US government, but states and municipalities. And again, when I wrote these slides, the current bid for a 30-day US Treasury bill was 2%, which meant for $9,999.67, today, the US government will pay me $10,000 in 30 days. Now, it's important to note that all a bond is, is an IOU. When I buy a US bond, it doesn't mean I own part of the United States. Or when I buy a bond from Google, it doesn't mean I own part of Google. It's just issued debt, it's just an IOU. So what do these financial markets do? They help, like I said, lubricate the economy. That means an optimal transfer of resources. We can try and earn some money off of it. We can put our money towards its most productive capacity, in forming capital and determining prices. And in doing so, we help to alleviate some of those transaction costs we talked about earlier in the unit by providing everyone information. Recall from last unit, when we talked about supply and demand, what this price vector is really doing is providing us all with information through the form of signaling, and financial markets strengthen these signals.